morning, everyone. Happy Easter. Welcome to St. Julie's Catholic Church for our celebration of Divine Mercy Sunday. I kindly remind you to please silence your cell phones during this morning's liturgy. And I hope you grabbed a hymnal on the way in. We will be starting our celebration by singing together at number 515, We Walk by Faith. Number 515 in your Breaking Bread hymnal. Let's stand together, introduce yourself, greet everyone by name. Our presider this morning is Father Paul, assisted by Deacon Dave. Let's please sing together number 515, We Walk by Faith. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Very good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. Happy Divine Mercy Sunday each year now. After being instituted by Pope St. John, John Paul II, we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter, reflecting especially upon God's graciousness, his mercy to us. So as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, as we pray now for God's mercy, we pause and ask that we be reconciled with him and with each other. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, 
Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of your people you have made your own, increase the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Would the children please come forward for the dismissal? Go now with the word of God. May it continue to find root in your lives and bear fruit always. In Jesus' name, amen.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. to the Lord for he is good his love is everlasting give thanks to the Lord for he is good his love is everlasting let the house of Israel say his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord for he is I was hard pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give Thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love is everlasting. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? 
This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his sides. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the, hands, the, of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his sides, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside And Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, good morning once again. I'm always aware that we have uh, visitors at... uh, 
all our liturgies. And this morning I happened to meet people from Washington State and from Las Vegas, so welcome to them and all others that are joining us here today. When I was first ordained 42 years ago, I was assigned to a parish in southeast part of the archdiocese in Pico Rivera. And most of the parish were people who had been born in East LA in Boyle Heights and had moved in that direction. So a very strong Mexican-American uh, congregation there, really my first exposure where I got to practice my very poor Spanish <laughs> at the time. And every Wednesday, I would take communion to several people who were sick and were homebound. And the last stop I would make was this elderly gentleman. His name was Rafael, but he was known lovingly by his family and friends as Tata, which is a title of endearment uh, for grandpa. And uh, I learned very quickly, if I made that my last stop, that I would get a good chorizo and egg breakfast. <laughs> every week. So, you know, we gave communion to Tata and just sat there with his daughter Bertha, her husband Ray, and whatever other, other members of the family uh, that were there. And it's one of those families I got to know very well over the years. And in my four years there, I buried um, Tata, her father. I buried her son, or her husband, Ray, her brother, uh, who lived down the street. And finally, I buried her son, who died after a very short illness. And as you can imagine, it was just a devastating experience for her. And I still remember to this day when I embraced her right before the funeral liturgy began, she said to me, she said, please pray that my son's friends who have strayed from God and the church find the grace in this moment to return. And I thought, what a woman of faith. You know, here she is going through the most difficult experience of her life. And she's not thinking about herself in this moment. In fact, she's thinking of her son's friends and her desire that they have a relationship with, with God. And, you know, she came to mind this weekend because we have that famous gospel that comes up every year, the second Sunday of Easter, of doubting Thomas. Now imagine, he's the only <laughs> apostle that gets an adjective in front of his name, right? <laughs> we don't have denying Peter. <laughs> we don't have traitorous Judah. <laughs> but Thomas has been known throughout the ages as the doubter. And not without irony, the name Thomas means twin. And I think it's because all of us, to some, some extent, are Thomas, that we all doubt. Uh, maybe I shouldn't say all, but most of us have doubts. And I know just in my own life, I've had to wrestle with God over several different uh, things that, uh, in the long run, I would say, have brought me closer and have given me deeper insight. And I think that's part of the message today. You know, Jesus once said very famously, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. And once in a while I'll have someone come to confession and as one of their sins say, I doubted. And I'm saying, is there a problem here? <laughs> you know? Because we've all, most of us have been there. But the point is, what do we do with our doubt, especially in moments of difficulty or turmoil? Do we turn away from God and walk 
in the opposite direction? Or do we lay that pain or that experience in life or that situation before him and look for insight and resolution in a way that uh, we're certain that God indeed is with us? And to a great extent, I believe that's what the gospel is asking of all of us. You know, when we see those who bring their pains to the Lord in the gospel, you know, very readily, willingly, he addresses those needs in a way that, if nothing else, brings encouragement and a sense of uh, just deeper union with him. And the second place that I want to go with the readings today very much has to do with the first. You know, in, in the reading from the Acts of the Apostles today, we hear how the early church lived. It said they sold all their possessions and laid them at the feet of the apostles. They were one of heart and spirit. Now, if I stood up here today and say, okay, everybody, this week we're going to sell all your houses <laughs> and empty all your bank accounts into one large account here at church, and whatever you need, come and see Father Ian. He'll take good care of you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it might sound, sound a little unrealistic, but the point I believe that we can all derive from the gospel today is not only our obligation to one another, but that obligation that comes to us in a good way where it deepens our ability to see the Lord in our midst. It seems to me that so much of the gospel, and particularly after the resurrection, the point of Jesus' words at that time are that the church be one, that there be this unitive kind of experience between the members of the faithful, that they're aware of the burdens of one another, of their individual needs, and when someone is suffering, they're never suffering alone. Because we all, as the mystical body of Christ, are called to be that presence to one another. The same lady that I was talking about earlier, Bertha, her kitchen door was always open and she had a huge table and there was always something on the stove. And anybody could just walk in and sit down and they would have a plate of food in front of them. And when I think about that, I think that plate wasn't just meat and vegetables and delicious sauce. It was love and hope and mercy and joy. Because very often people would come over and share their burdens, the difficulties that they may have been going through at that particular time. And I would say no one ever walked out that door without a sense of renewed hope and spirit. And that's the gift that we are called to share with one another. Now, there's challenges in the church, and especially when we have a large congregation. You know, very often we can have that experience of it not being personal, but more impersonal. You know, I talked to a member of our parish community who no longer comes here because they found a church where they have, you know, small groups where they, he feels that, you know, they can be present to each other in a way that, that he didn't, wasn't able to experience here. Not that we don't have those opportunities, but he just never found that. But again, the point is that our spiritual journey is not a journey that we take on our own. But as the new Israel, as the people of God, as the mystical body of Christ, 
we walk our journey and the timeline we've been given in this world with one another. And again, it is the gift, the gifts that we possess that to a great degree are meant to be healing salve for the world. You know, today is Divine Mercy Sunday, and Pope John Paul gave us this day to reflect not only on God's merciful care for us, but also for our responsibility as people of faith to be ministers of mercy to one another, wherever we can avail ourselves to the pains of the world. So as we gather here as we do each week, and we say this is the summit and the source of our faith, the holy sacrifice of the Mass. But when we hear the deacon say, go in the peace of Christ, it's meant to be really a command to go out and to serve one another, to lift up the burdens of those who suffer, and to love those who are unloved. In all of this, I believe very deeply that we find our own deepest meaning and purpose in life. Because it's literally how God has created us. It's in our DNA, you know, that we receive God's mercy, God's love, God's gifts, and then that we generously share those to others demonstrably in a way that, that the light, the presence of our Lord is made manifest through his mystical body as he has called us to be. Together now we profess what we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, the begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us bring our prayers before the Lord who knows our every need. That the church may continue to grow in charity and faith as she remains a sign of God's merciful love for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the Lord may look favorably upon and provide the resources for the needs of individuals and communities. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have been separated from God by sin may experience forgiveness and healing through the sacrament of reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that all of us gathered here may be guided by the Holy Spirit in our work to build up the kingdom of God on earth 
by our words and our actions. And this morning we pray for the safe return of all our missionaries from Mexico on upon the successful completion of doing God's work. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the world, for peace in the war and torn countries of the Sudan, of the Ukraine, for peace in Israel and Palestine, for peace within our country, within our communities, our families, and within our church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> that the faithful departed may be welcome into the kingdom of heaven and see the face of God. And this morning we especially pray for Ber Bernard Moon, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those intentions that you hold in the silence of your heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for vocations to the priesthood and religious life. For those who have asked for our prayer and for those who have no one to remember them today, we pray to the Lord. Lord Father, you sent your Son not to condemn the world, but to save it. We ask you to hear the prayers we offer for ourselves and for the needs of the world. And we pray now through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
now, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the oblation of your people and of those you have brought to new birth through baptism, that renewed by a confession of your name, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. you Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, he has restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You have set Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Julie Billiard, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, the religious, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of the family that you have summoned here before you this day. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Forever and ever. Together we join our hearts and voices and pray for the coming of God's kingdom as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you guys. Peace be with you. Peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join in singing hymn number 581, Worthy is the Lamb. That is hymn number 581.
next hymn can be found in your worship aid, page 21. I have seen the Lord, that is in your worship aid, page 21. Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now a message from Mary Lowe. Good morning, fellow parishioners. I am Mary Lowell, and I'm here representing Seasons of Hope. I have a couple of announcements to share with you today. You have an opportunity to attend the Second Eucharist Revival this coming Saturday with a rich theme, The Holy Mass Explained. Come and meet our guest, Father Tin Duke Pham, a liturgy professor at St. John Seminary. Mark your calendar this Saturday, 2 p.m. 
For more details, grab a flyer on the way out. Are you planning on getting married in the Catholic Church and have questions? We have answers. I don't have answers. <laughs> have answers. An informational workshop will be held Saturday, April 20th, from 1 to 3 p.m. There's no cost, but pre-registration is required. If you have experienced the death of a loved one, you know grief. It is because we love, we grieve. St. Julie's offers a six-week Christ-centered grief support program called Seasons of Hope. A new season begins Sunday, April 28th. We keep the group small, so registration is important and it is required and space is limited. I will be outside after mass today to answer any questions or to register you if you're interested. More details are available for all these three announcements in the par on the parish website. And now I'm going to introduce um, a Knights of Columbus member who's going to share an event which probably involves food. Test. Happy Easter, everyone. I'm Bob DeCure with the Knights of Columbus. And just briefly, a little bit of time. As you know, over the past several years, we've had to change the way we do things. Um, if you recall, for a while, we were not even in the pews here or over at the church. Since we've moved from the church over to here, things have changed a bit. So our fundraising, our charitable works, and things have had to go off-site, somewhere else, some are here, but as we know, things have changed a lot. So what we're doing with the Knights of Columbus is, gee, I think it feels like spring out today. How about a golf game? So over at Los Robles, in less than two weeks, we're going to be having a social golf tournament and this is, it's a really easy one. If you are just a once in a while golfer, which used to be me once a year, um, you come out and you're foursome, whoever hits the ball best, you use theirs. <laughs> so you can, you can actually score under 100. Um, so what I'm saying is, uh, so for our fundraising and charitable works, we, we feed once, once a month, Many other agencies do too. We feed the lower income and the homeless. Uh, we used to be able to do it here in the church. We, we cannot because we are now the church. So we do it offsite at one of our night's places. So what we do with that is we spend a lot of money doing that and we haven't had a lot of chance to have a fundraiser. So if you meet us at the table outside, we'll tell you all about it. Um, and it's a way to help support our charities and have a little fun at the same time. Thank you, Father. Thank you. I'm sure the Knights will be happy to take your money even if you don't play golf on that day. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing and peace of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you all today and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia, thanks be to God, together in your worship aid on page 12 filled with the spirit page 12 you did fine Oh, yes, they were. 